what an opportunity it is and a privilege to be saved. If I wasn't saved, I'd try to get saved. Amen. There is no other place I'd rather be than in the kingdom of God. Because every other place doesn't have any hope. Every other place doesn't have any future. Can I get an amen? amen. So uh, we'd like to invite those watching online as well. I am one of the associate pastors here. I'm actually the youth pastor. And I'm speaking with the older brothers and sisters tonight. Glory to God. I love them so dearly. Amen. amen. But let's talk about... Uh, no, let's first of all, let's stand up. Let's stand up to our feet and let's lift our hands and pray in the Holy Ghost for a few minutes and, and worship God. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and how you've kept us up to, up to this point this week. Father God, we thank you, Lord, so, so much on how you favored us on our jobs, Lord. How you've caused things, Lord, that were headed in the wrong direction to turn around for us. Father, we thank you, Lord, for bonuses and, and promotions, Lord, on our jobs, Father. And Lord, we also thank you, Lord, for watching over our kids, Lord, that may not be in the plan of God for their life right now. As of yet, Father, we thank you, Lord, for how you've kept them. And Lord, we just thank you, Father God, that tonight, as we congregate together, Lord, that you're in the midst of us. And Lord, that you show us things, Lord, on how to grow and how to become more in your image, Father. And we thank you, Lord, for the victory. We thank you, Lord, for the victory on every hand, Father. We thank you for increase on every hand, Father. We thank you, Lord, for our relationships flourishing, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for our bodies being healed, Lord, and getting, getting stronger and more vibrant, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for hips and joints and spines being aligned and being healed in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for hearts beating and pumping, Lord, Arteries being opened, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Everything working like you said it is supposed to work. We thank you, Lord, for clear vision, Father God. We, we bind the cataracts and, and the blurry visions, Father God, and we thank you, Lord, that we see clearly in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord, that our ears hear in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, for being so great to us. There's no other like you, Father, and we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Father, we thank you, Lord, that what we put our hands to prospers in the name of Jesus. We give you glory for that, Father. Thank you, Lord, for delivering us, Father. Thank you for setting us free. Thank you, Lord, for your hedge of protection over us, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that as we go to and from church tonight, Father God, that our paths are full of life and not death in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your angels that you have given charge over us, Father, to protect us and to keep us. And, Lord, we just give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, you agree with that, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Can y'all can y'all um, deal with a testimony right off the bat? So, y'all know my little Pepe, right? He's actually my son, my grandson, but he's, he's my son because I'm raising him, right? But here's the deal. He had... Um, Fever that would come and go for like two, like a month, month and a half. And, uh, you know, when a baby gets fever, you know, 103, 104, you know, there's some concern there. But before um, Sarah took to the doctor, I said, I need to pray. So I got him, I sat him on my lap, and I said, Peyton, I need to pray for you. So he, he closed his eyes and lifted his hands, right? <laughs> And I put my hand on his chest, and I told that fever to leave and not return, right? Well, that was in the beginning. Over a week, a month and a half, it kept coming and going. But one thing never changed was what I said, okay? So um, we um, was praying and, and, and listening, and then his grandmother said, uh, Pastor Anna said, I'm sensing this, that pacifier. I said, really? She said, yeah. She said, it's that pacifier. I said, okay. She said, I'm, I set him up a doctor's appointment. I'm going to take him to the doctor. I said, okay. I don't have to go do it because I don't like doctors often. I can't stand how they poke on him and pride on him and all that. So I didn't have to go. And uh, the doctor said, um, 
It's that pacifier. <laughs> Glory to God. But see, we got that from the Holy Spirit. The Lord gave us that. Right? The Lord gave us that. So we, we need to be, we ought to be more quicker to run to the Lord first. All our answers are in the kingdom. Everything that we need is in the kingdom. Right? Glory to God. I just thought I'd share that off the bat. So let's talk about uh, the Lord's tithe and our offering. Amen? Um, let's go to Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10. No, I take that back. Jeremiah 29, 11. Now, I'm using these scriptures. I, I use these in a um, um, detour because I want the students to see what the Lord really thinks about them. Because how, how many of y'all know it's important? Y'all, you, you know what God thinks about you. Okay? So um, it reads, I got an amplifier. Let me get in King James. It reads, let's read it together, can we? For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. So we know that the Lord is thinking of us. That's a good thing. Said the Lord, thoughts of what? Peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Okay? So we know that God is thinking of us. All right? From the very beginning, he was thinking of us. Amen. Amen. So he wasn't only thinking of us in the area of healing, but he was thinking of the area of totally, right? John 10, 10, Jesus said, I came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly to the full, till it overflows. That's all encompassing. Can I get an amen? Amen. Okay, so let's go to Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10. I just read verse 6, but you can stay at verse 10. It says, for I am the Lord, I do not change. So that's encouraging to me because I've been in situations before and had to deal with some stuff where my money was constantly changing. Maybe I'm the only one. But the word says that he does not change, right? Verse 10 goes on to say, bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and prove me now this, says the Lord, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing for you that you won't have enough room to receive it. Amen. Now the NIV says, just be patient with me here. I'm working with a, a phone. This is the version we like in detour because it's just awesome. Um. Thank you for your patience. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, it reads like this. It says, bring the whole tenth into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open floodgates. Floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to receive it. So that floodgates mean that there's going to be an overflow. Right? And it's not only one floodgate. It's more than one. Are y'all still here? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. See, God has increase on his mind for us. Amen? So it's important that we get our thoughts lined up with his. Amen? Verse 9 reads, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Verse 9 reads, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns, barns, savings accounts, checking accounts, IRAs will be filled with plenty. And your price presses will burst out with new wine. All right, let's go to Psalms 23. My Bible just fell open there. That's, that, I like that. It reads, verse 1, the Lord is what? My shepherd. I shall not want. See, because the enemy will try to tell you 
You need that 10%. No, I need to sow this 10%. Right? I have been down to, a, and, and I probably told you before, but, you know, I've been down to a bologna sandwich. And my wife sold it. And that, in return, <laughs> and in return, we had food for a month. I take that back maybe two weeks. Right? $100 back in, $100 worth of groceries back in 1998 was, you get a pretty good amount of groceries. But, but that, a bologna sandwich caused that to happen. Amen? She gave to a lady that I was trying to avoid. Because she asked me, and I was like, I just closed the door. I hadn't been saved long, in, in my defense. And uh, I, I didn't, I, me and God didn't have a financial relationship in this area. See, I had just come from the streets, and I was used to just getting everything that I could get. But Pastor Anna had worked this for a while. And uh, she said, what does she want? I said, I don't know. So she opened the door, and the lady asked for something to eat. She went in the refrigerator, got the meat, got the bread, put some mustard and stuff on it, and I'm just sitting there looking at her. Lady called the next day, said, you won the, the drawing at Harvest Foods. Glory to God. I took her down there, we got them groceries. Hey, Amen. Praise God. God makes a way when there seems to be no way. Amen. Now, so what I would like to do, as most of y'all know, the Lord gave us some words and, uh, for 2021. And I'm going to read some of them. Are you okay with that? Because this is a great reminder. Okay. He said that 2021 is going to surpass any good year that you've had. Are we still in 2021? Yes, we are. Far above and beyond that. That the year, the world says it's in a whole other level. But understand that even if the world were to look at your life in 2021 and say it's on a whole other level, that does not even describe what I'm going to do. Glory to God. Hallelujah, because the things that are going to be released are things of the spirit, things of the Holy Spirit, things of the of the moving of the spirit of God. And when that begins to be released, all the provision for what I'm asking you to do will flow with it. All of it. That will be released. Things will be revealed in this year in 2021, things that you You've had some inclination of, but never a full grasp on. Oh, it's going to become clear. And when the provision starts to come into your hands, listen. When the provision starts to come into your hand, immediately when it hits your hands, the direction for it is going to come. Glory to God. The Lord says he gives multiplied seed to the soil. And I will begin to bring... Many out of debt. Thank you, Jesus. I will begin by bringing many to a place of financial security because the days are short. The time is short. I do not need my people, says the Lord, encumbered and burdened with financial difficulty. And for those that will believe me in this year of 2021, there will be miraculous turns in their finances. Believe that I receive. I believe I receive. There will be overflowing, forgive me, overwhelming, magnificent victory where it is concerned. And I set them up to be a huge blessing to the kingdom of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. So if you would uh, like to give, there should be envelopes in the back of the chair in front of you. You can also text to give to FBLR plus amount to 28. 950. You can also go to the uh, website and uh, click on the, uh, the uh, button there that says give, and you can give that way also. Um, you know, when I, when I, when I, concerning this, when I, um, when I was at Agape, they talked, and, and, and uh, Minister King and, and Sister Peck can attest to this. When I was at Agape, they talked, and Brother James, they talked, um, 
um, a lot about supporting the mission field. Right? Y'all remember that? And, uh, man, I remember the first time I was able to support a missionary with $5. I was like, I am in tall cotton now. You hear me? And um, that, that burnt a, a vision in me to grow financially to the point to where if the word is going out, I'm supporting it. You understand what I'm saying? Because the word saved my life. And I'm here today because somebody gave. Somebody gave into the vision that someone had. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So my money, when I give, I give with that vision. I'm saving a life. I'm helping a crack addict. I'm helping a mother that needs a way out. My money has a, a mission. And I've increased. I've increased. I heard people say that. Well, you, you know, when you get other people minded, you'll increase financially. And I used to like, man, will I ever get there? And I'm not totally there. I mean, I'm doing good, but I ain't doing as good as I want to be. Amen. I envision buying churches, paying for airplanes. Yeah. Why not me? Why not me? Them ball players walk riding around in planes. I want my pastor in the plane. I want my pastor riding around in the roads. That's just me. I want my pastors looking sharp. Bling, and he don't like bling, but I, if he won't bling, I like to see, you know, I like, um, what's his name, Brother Keith Moore? Because he like bling. You have them nice ones? Like, woo, that is nice. You know, that's just me. Praise God. So if you, uh, let's stand to our feet. Let's do those 10 benefits, please, Brother Rich. Hallelujah. Students can say them with their eyes closed, some of them. Because I'm in Christ, I receive supernatural increase and promotion. Restoration of all the enemy has stolen. Honor in the midst of adversaries. Increased assets, especially real estate. Greater victories in the midst of greater odds or impossibilities. Recognition, even when I seem to be the least likely to receive it. Prominence and preferential treatment. Petitions granted, even by ungodly civil authority. Policies, rules, regulations, and laws changed to my advantage. Battles won, I won't have to fight because God fights for me. As I tithe and give offerings, I am believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills decrease, bills paid off, Blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for supplying all my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. You can come rejoicing. Hallelujah. The Lord is so good to us. So we're going to talk a little bit about living faith. Living faith. Amen. Let me get situated here. So if you will, go with me to um, the first scripture I want to go to is Mark chapter 9, verse 3. And there's something I want to bring your attention to in all these. I'm getting ready. We're going to go to about four scriptures. We're going to look at them, and then I'm going to make a point on them. This is going to help us. Mark chapter 9, verse 3. Now, if you're looking in your Bible, what, what color ink is that in? Huh? 
923. Yes, ma'am. I'll slow down and talk a little, a little clear. It's in red. Okay? Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, what's possible? To who? Those who believe. Let's go to Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Y'all there? What color ink is that in? Red, okay. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have what? Faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, this hindrance, this problem, this situation, this circumstance, whatever it is, this sickness, disease, remove hence to yonder place, and what's going to happen? It shall remove. And, what's, and what else? Nothing shall be impossible unto you praise god let's go to mark chapter 11 verse 23 y'all see it here Amen. glory to god if you're there say amen. amen all right what color ink is that that is red for verily i say unto you that whosoever that shall do what? Right. Say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be what? Right. Cast in the sea, and shall not what? Yeah. Doubt, but what? Right. Believe that those things which they what? Right. Shall come to pass, they're going to do what? Right. Have what they say. Right. Now, all that's in red, and our brother Jesus is saying it, our Savior is saying that to us. Amen? Now, let's go to John chapter 12 and verse 49. See, because the world will try to convince you that all of the junk that's going on, God has something to do with it. For I have not what? Is it in red? Okay. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which what? Sent me. He gave me the commandment what I should what? Say and what I should speak. Okay. So all those scriptures that we just read about us being able to do the impossible. Right? We believe. We speak. We receive the impossible becomes possible. Amen. Amen. Now, I um, know this to be true because for years I heard that you had to it was just impossible to live a life free from any type of addiction. I mean, I saw saved people drinking, smoking, whoring. Okay, and I'm like, okay, well, hmm. So when I got saved, I had some stuff I had to overcome, right? Because I'm seeing deacons, I'm seeing folks that hold position in churches carrying on this way. Okay, so I get over to Agape. And uh, get up to the balcony, praise and worship was off the charts, okay? I get it, I, I, you know, and that's over and we sit down and this white man walks up. I said, I said, Anna, where you got me at? She said, boy, just be quiet. <laughs> right? Because I was raised that 
God did special favors for white people. Right? I might get it done for me. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, it's just a revelation that they had nothing, nothing, nothing against them. So I'm like, okay. But at the same time, I'm hurting. I need some help. You understand what I'm saying? I'm hurting. So I'm sitting here, and he starts talking about this, right? About the impossible become impossible. I'm like, okay. And the things, and, and, and all I had to do was don't put any limits on God. Right? Just let God do what he does. And I do my part. Right? Which is do according to what I know. I said, I can do that. Right? Because I'm looking at, I'm looking at a lineage of what I just spoke to you about. It, come, it, it was coming down the hill. And it had gotten to me. Y'all understand what I'm saying? That was just how it was. Okay, everybody say, but we still going to party. We still going to, you know, like, no, no, that's not right. So once the light came on for me, see, the light came on. The light came on. And I said, I am stopping that stuff. It's not going to hinder my kids. It's not going to my branch of the tree. I'm shutting it down. Okay? So I started saying some things. And, you know, we lived in the middle of the crack neighborhood, and my knees are knocking together every time I got to leave the house and go to work. But I was talking this word. I was literally had to walk through drug dealers, but I was speaking the word as I was walking through. Nothing was ever said to me. You understand what I'm saying? The power of the word kept me. And at the same time, my body's yearning for drugs and alcohol. But I'm holding on. I'm holding, I mean, this is my confidence. Right? I've been saved. I've been set free. I've been delivered. Right? Psalms 107 says he sent his word to heal and to deliver. I had a murmur so bad in my chest that it was causing me chest pains from all the drugs I had smoked. And they said, you're going to have to have surgery. I ain't had no surgery. When I left the VA, that thing was gone. Glory to God. So not only did he save me, <laughs> he healed me. You understand what I'm saying? He healed me. No medications, nothing. Impossible. Become impossible. Amen. And uh, so I just talk a lot. I talk a lot. I'm not going to, I am not friends with any poor mouthers. Amen. Not even my relative. Well, why don't you come around a lot? Because y I just want to tell them y'all poor mouths, but they wouldn't understand that. I'm not going to do it. And then I have to leave and go home and work and decipher through all, I'm not doing that. I'd rather just stay at home by myself. I'm serious. Before, I mean, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Let's go there. Let me look at my notes. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. It says, now thanks be unto who? God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Always. So it doesn't matter what is facing you. You always triumph over that. Always. 
Right? Let's go to Psalms 23. We read it again a few minutes ago. Psalms 23. See, this word, the word of God is full of power. And it's creative. It is creative. So when, you know, when, 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 when my body was wanting to do one thing, I just kept speaking the creative power of God. And it created in me a vision, a picture of how I wanted to look. I wanted to be able to walk down any street, no matter where it was, and not have to not be thinking about drugs and alcohol. I had never done it. See, from the time, as far as I can remember, I had did some type of substance up to that point. So imagine what I had to, but the Lord did it. He did it. It changed how I saw myself. See, that's the reason the enemy will say, come on now. Man, you've been believing for this thing for about seven years. It's okay if you give up. I mean, you, you stood that long. At least you did that. No, it's not okay. It's not okay when we are told that we have the victory. Right? That would be foolish to quit. It would be foolish to give up on healing when you know you're already healed. It'd be healing to look at your accounts and say, I'm broke when you know you're rich. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, you're rich. No poem to say that I will not poor mouth. No more poor mouthing. Praise God. So the living word says that you're healed. The living word says that your needs are met. The living word says that the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not want. The living word says that God causes you to triumph. Can I get an amen? amen? Now let's look at Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 2. See, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38 tells us that we should be living by faith. So that means that we ought to be conducting our life in line with the word. And some of that is saying what God says. If I say I'm going to go sit down in the chair, guess what I'm going to come over here and do? Sit down. Okay? Get up. Right? You said you would come to church, right? Where you at? <laughs> so Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2 says that a person is snared. They're caught by the words of their mouth. That snare means they're trapped. They, am, they are involved in difficulties. Okay, Lord, I'm praying and asking you to deliver me from this sickness and this disease. Thank you, Lord, that you bless my food and my water. And that person get up to go to work and go sit with all those people, poor mouthers in the break room. <laughs> That's not how we live. We let what we first said stay said. See, because what we first say is going to set the course. It's going to set the course, right? But my heart is jumping out of my chest. Tell it to stop in the name of Jesus. Been there. It works, right? I, uh, I get up in the morning, and, and, and I remember the word that the, 
The Lord gave Pastor Michelle over me was limber. Right? I'm limber. But at a lot of moments, I don't think, I don't feel limber. So I, do, so I do my part. I stretch. And I pray in tongues. Right? When I get up, I'm limber. But you was hurting. That don't change the fact that I'm limber and that I'm healed. Right? Just because we have to do things in the natural doesn't change what God says. The enemy try to use that against you. Well, you had to lay down there and stretch for 20 minutes. At least I could lay down there and get up. Amen. Praise God. I didn't lay down there and stay down there. Can I get a witness? I don't care how long I had to lay down there and stretch. I was able to get lay down there and get up. Glory to God. And I took it to another level. I was, um, my back was hurting so bad one morning. And I said, you know what? I said, I'm going to the gym. My wife said, you going to work? I said, yeah, I'm going to the gym. Well, what you going to work on? I said, I'm going to do legs. So that means that I got to put weight on my shoulders. Right? I'm, I, I, I'm doing everything that's going to require me to use my back that I could think of. I put some worship music, put that Chicago Mass Choir on on my phone, put my earbuds in. And they said, thank you, thank you, Jesus. I'm in there and I'm squatting. Now, listen, check this out now. In the beginning, I was hurting. I mean, I was hurting. But the more I done it, the easier it got. And when I left the gym, I was in less pain than I was when I got there. The whole time I'm doing this weight and, I, and I'm putting my back under stress, I mean, I ain't doing nothing foolish, but... I'm just letting, it, letting my flesh and the enemy know you don't run me. I am more than a conqueror. I am the healed of the Lord. So the healed, the healed person of the Lord don't go lay in a recliner. I get up and I go and I do something. I exercise my faith. Can I get an amen? So we are not going to snare ourselves with our words. Let's go to Proverbs Chapter 18, verse 21. It says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. What kind of fruit you want? I want healed fruit. I want good fruit. I don't like rotten fruit. Right? I want, I want, I want, I want the blessing of the Lord. That's the fruit I want. So that's the fruit that I let flow out of my lips. Can I get an amen? You know, the situation is temporal. It's temporal. It'll be there until you, until the person gets fed up with it. See, and, and, and whatever you focus on is, is, is whatever the person focuses on is what they are. So I, I just decided, you know, I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be restored. I'm going to be limber. Amen. I mean, I got grandkids that are two boys, boys especially. I mean, from the time they hit my house, it's time to go. <laughs> Peyton goes to another level when Caden comes around. Goes to level 10. <laughs> and they're not looking at Sarah or Grandma. They're looking right at me. It's time to get rolling. So I'm healed. Right? I'm healed. I run around with my grandkids. They jumping up and down on my back. I don't go I don't holler, ow! I just let them jump. We roll and we play. Praise God. Amen. So, we are going to speak life over our situations. Amen? Okay, so now that we are agreeing with God and uh, your faith is living and active, what do you do when the challenge doesn't change? You 
Stick to, stick to your guns. You got to stick to your guns. But it's been 13 years. What's your point? I must heal from the beginning of the world. I was healed. That's how long I've been healed. So what you're talking about don't even matter. Say that. I am healed. Glory to God. I am healed. I am healed. All joints, all bones, all marrows, all ligaments. My blood is flowing. My blood is, 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 is you know, that's like a mitochondria. That's the only thing I remember from a and, a, anatomy A&P in medical school, that you know, all that blood and stuff work. That's working correctly in the name of Jesus. No cancer cells, none of that, none of that, none of that. That blood is perfectly balanced in Jesus' name. Sound mind, glory to God. We are healed. We're walking in the blessing of the Lord for our life. Praise God. The blessing is at work in my life. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. See, no matter how long that thing has been there, you got the victory. And what you first said must be what you last say. We have to cast down all these thoughts of doubt, defeat, your mama had it, your daddy had it, well, they had it. I, I don't, I, I'm not receiving that. You know, I, I, I you know, my wife, she, she sometimes had to make me go on these yearly exams because I don't like talking about my medical history to them doctors. You understand what I'm saying? Because in my blood, something in my blood might seem a little off. They won't talk about, well, did your mama? Look, I said, I said, look, doc, I said, I hear you, but, man, I'm good. That's exactly what I tell them. I'm good. <laughs> I say, I'm going to the gym. I'm working out. I mean, you know, I'm good. Okay, Mr. Clemens, but, you know, I'm good, doc. I'm healed, man. I'm good. Any, any, any this cancer running in your family? I'm good, doc. What does my test say? They're clear. Okay, well, why we? I don't fish. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I don't fish. I don't Google symptoms. None of that. I get the word. I don't. I don't fish. I don't. I don't fish. I do not fish. Glory to God. First Corinthians fifteen fifty seven says, "But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory, making us conquerors." Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Galatians 6, 9. Let's go there. Praise God. Yeah, you know, people try to talk you into stuff. Like, nah, I'm, I'm healed. I'm good. I'm whole. It says, let us not be weary and well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Don't go to poor mouth. Poor mouth and is giving up. Throwing in the towel. We are more than conquerors. We have the victory over all sickness and disease, over every part of the curse. Jesus took, did away with that for us. My brothers and them used to take me to fight, right, down in Mariana. I was a scrappy little dude, kind of husky. And uh, when these look, you know, they were, I don't know what my brother and them were doing, probably was no good. I just leave it like that, okay? They were teenagers. And uh, I guess these, little, these guys would, like, 
get on their nerves so they would come get me. He said, hey, man, come on over. You know, we'll take you to the store and buy you this if you go over here and beat this guy up. I'm like, okay. I'm... So I go over there, and I whoop up on the little guy. But see, what I didn't know is that they had already scared the kid. You know, they had already set me up to win. You understand what I mean? So I would go over there, and I had two moves, a kick and a body slam and a punch. Three moves. It was over. But see, that's what Jesus done for us. He already went before us and, and, whooped, and, and whooped the devil. Our big brother did that. Y'all hear, I know it's comfortable, but he did. And that's what my brothers used to do. And if I'd have told my mama, she'd have whooped them. But, you know, that, them treats they gave me were good. <laughs> yeah, go there and we, we end up, you know, and then we be friends afterwards. You know, we playing together the next day. But, but that's, what, that's what Jesus did. Our big brother, he went and he, he, he did that for us. All we got to do is show up. That's all I basically did. You know, two or three moves. And it was over. So we just show up, get in the word, find our answer in the word, meditate on it. Believe it and speak it. It's over. It's over. We just need to show up. Glory to God. It's over. It's over. He barking and putting out. He's like, man, I hope they really don't know that they big brother is coming there and whooped on me already. If I can give them to think less of themselves, they might not say nothing. They might not say nothing. No, we're going to say something. We're going to be talking. Amen. But see, here's what's key, though. Our thoughts are governed by association and things that we may be hearing. That's the reason we got to guard it. That's the reason I don't, I'm not friends with poor mouthers. Not doing that. See, poor mouthers, if you hang around them too much, they'll have you sown crosswise with God. Who won't do that? I won't be sown on the same, we're on the same row. Right? I want my row to look exactly like God's row. If God's row is not curving, my row is not going to be curving. If it's straight, mine is going to be straight. Amen? So we must guard against evil thoughts and doubt that comes into our minds. See, doubt is sneaky. Doubt will say, will make you, look, it looks for, um, um, a way in, like, um, it's okay. You know, you're hurting. It's all right. You, don't, you know, it's okay if you don't, you know, you're hurting, you don't get up and go in your, in your prayer closet and pray and, and say you confess. It's okay. No. No, it's not. Right? No, it's not. No, it's not. Why? Because thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. And there has to be some action to what we're saying. Praise God. So we can't be slothful in this. We have to shepherd our mind. We have to oversee it. We have to make sure what's going in is things of God. We have to guard our spirit. If it's contradicting to what we're confessing, we got to let it go. Don't permit a picture of failure to remain in your mind. Never doubt that you have what you say. If doubt persists, you be more persistent. So I told you I was living in that drug infection territory. And my body was, was just, it was just rebelling. It was lining up, but it was rebelling. And the only thing I knew to do was to say what God says. What he gave me when I was in the VA rehab, right? They were going around saying well, their name and that they're recovering and that they're a drug. And I was like, no, 
No, no, no. That is not what I want to say. But I didn't know what to say. I was just saved. But I knew that wasn't what I wanted to say. I didn't want to say that because I wanted to be free. So why would I say that I'm a drug addict and an alcoholic? That wasn't working for me. So I just cried out to the Lord. A babe in Christ, I got up and on the side of the bed and I said, Lord, help me. I don't want to say that. And, I, and, and again, I, I'm a baby. I didn't know the Holy Spirit talking to me. I heard say that you're delivered. Okay, that sounds a lot better. So we sitting in there, and uh, I'm thinking about this all day. Because this lady, she was just persistent about you say it the right way. You know. So came around in my, my turn to, to, you know, to say what they said. And I, I said, I'm Larry Clemens, and I'm delivered from drugs and alcohol. She said, she said, she said, Mr. Clemens. See, poor mouth. Mr. Clemens? You mean that? I said, no. Amen. Before I know it, I said, no. Come on, I said, I'm delivered. And then this other brother that's been through 30 rehabs over here, talking like, bro, you better knock on wood. I said, dude, I'm not knocking on no wood. I said, I'm delivered. That's all I knew to say. Right? That's what God had gave me, but it worked for me. And it gave me that vision, bro, on the inside of me of freedom. And then he showed my wife through a dream that I had went into a courthouse, right? There were these two dark colored figures. She don't know if they were men or whatever, but they had me bound. They were on both sides and I had big balls and shackles on my feet and they took me into the courthouse, right? And she said, I was in there and I came out screaming. That I was free. This was right after God had gave me that word. He gave her that dream. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But God did that for me. Amen. 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 See, it, it, it ain't got to be a scripture that's 12 sentences. Right? The enemy will tell you that's, that's the only scripture you know. Yeah, yeah but it's working. Yeah. It's working. Yeah. Right here, try to condemn you about that. You only know one scripture. Yeah, but it's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. I am delivered still works today. It still works today. Say this. I am delivered from sickness and disease and poverty, debt and lack. I am, I am free. free. I, am I am the redeemed, the redeemed of, the of the Lord. So I say, so I say that, I that I am blessed. That I'm blessed, that I'm blessed. In, Jesus In Jesus' name. Glory to God. So that's what we say. Man, I, you know, this beautiful house that the Lord has blessed me with has great, what do you call it, Minister King, where you, where you sing and, you, and your voice might sound better than what it really sounds? You know, in, in the house, you understand what I'm saying? So I like when everyone, everybody leaves and I'm there by myself because I just walk through it and I just be, you know, I'm just like, I can get loud. You know what I'm saying? I can get demonstrative. And my voice just echoes through my whole house. Right? When I'm speaking the word. I love to talk. I love to talk. But I'm not poor mouthing. I'm not sowing crosswise. Amen? Praise God. Because we have the victory. Say that. Okay, so doing good is saying what God says. That's doing good. Well, I want the Lord to be pleased with me. Say what he says. There's nothing that pleases me more, Sister Tracy, than when my kids come to me and say, Dad, guess what? I did what you told me to do. 
I'm ready to go in my pockets. What you want? What do you need? Right? Because it pleases me when they say what I say and do what I am instructing them to do. Right? Because I'm raising them in the admonition of the Lord. Right? I am doing to the best of my ability what the Lord shows me to do. So you imitate me. Right? And then your kids imitate you. And then that kids imitate them. And then that kids imitate them. Can I, oh, come on. Can I get a witness in here? Glory to God. So standing on the word is standing, in, standing on faith. In the word of God is doing good. And it pays rich dividends. If we will not give up, we shall reap. You are more than an overcomer. You are healed. You are rich. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Everybody just stand up with me. Praise God. Praise God. You know, the Bible says that people heard and got healed. That's the reason it's very important for us to say what the word says. See, when the Lord healed that heart murmur, and I didn't go to the doctor, but I just said what he said, he healed that heart murmur with I am delivered. What did I get delivered from? A sickness, a problem, something that wasn't in his plan for me. I hate sickness. I hate every part of the curse. I hate it. So when I say, when, you know, that's when I would like being at home because I like to get demonstrative, like I'm fighting. I even walk through the house and be throwing punches, like I'm just, you know. We got to get aggressive. See, because... We, the words that I've just read earlier said that time is speeding up. I don't want to have to get to heaven and be totally restored. I'd like to see that now. Right? That's what I tell people. You don't have to wait till you get to heaven to be healed. Right? You can have five financial accounts. You can have as many as you're willing to go down there and open up for the Lord to put money in. Can I get a witness in here? See, we are not to think like the world. We're not even of the world. We're not even of the world. Praise God. With your healed self. With your blessed self. Right? So you tell me where else can you go to a church or go to anywhere and people do what you do with what you have? That's the blessing of the Lord on your life. You're blessed coming in. You're blessed going out. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. Amen. We just agreeing with God. Right? We, 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 and, and you know, uh, well, what, well, what if I ain't, what if I ain't, you know, I ain't spoken a word? Well, just start. See, because the blessing didn't go back to where it started from. It stayed where you stopped confessing the word. And as soon as you pick it back up, it's going to start moving speedily back to you. Keith Moore said that him and his wife was believing for a nice vehicle. I don't remember the specifics of it, but they had gotten off. And he said, the Lord told him, just pick back up. 
So just pick back up. Just pick back up. There's no condemnation. There's no condemnation. Just pick back up. Body, you healed. Bank account, you full. Overflowing. In Jesus' name. Heart, you are regular. You be with the rhythm of life. Glory to God. Joints, you are limber. Ligaments, you, you move like you're supposed to. Eyes, you see. Mind, you're sound. Ears, you hear. Praise God. No more poor mouthing. Glory to God. Living words, creative words. Can I get a witness? Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the power of your word. Thank you, Lord, that everything that we have said, we thank you that we have. We thank you, Lord, that every sickness and disease is gone. Every displaced joint is in place. Every every confused mind is sound. Every broken relationship is fixed. Somebody can ready to hear from their kids they ain't heard from in a while. Thank you for that, Father. Mm-hmm. Y'all just pray in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yes, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you're good to us. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Again, thank you all for coming out tonight. Praise God. Um, let me make some announcements real quick. I know you've been standing for a minute. There's no healing school this week. Uh, July 24th, Proverbs 31 Ladies Bible Study with Sister Jessie Ford. Praise God at 10 a.m. July 25th, with Jer Chariots of Life Rally at 10 a.m. service, Sunday service with Dr. Jerry Savelle. Again, they're asking that we all park in the back because they're going to have a lot of motorcycles, motorcycles out front, about 40 of them, okay? Amen? And uh, we will have security on the back. So we can put that vision up. The vision of this church is to build people's faith and frame their world by the word of God, you and I will always be world changers.